Okay, so in this exercise, we are going to uh, explore and develop a predictive model of our GMC type response in pancreatic cancer using the mRNA expression data set from the TCGA. So here is the data set that, well, you are familiar with. Basically, I have annotated the responder and the non-responder as I shown you previously. Uh, in the previous few videos. So from now on, what I'm going to do is I'm going to import this into the uh, Kruko Omics and, uh, and the uh, Omics Explorer and try to develop the model using the SVM, uh, KNN and also the random tree uh, algorithm. So but before we do that, so we have to make sure that there's no redundant variables here because if there's any redundant variables, the software is not going to be able to analyze it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select this column and I'm going to identify if there's any uh, redundant or duplicate uh, variables here. To do that, basically you can use the uh, conditional formatting. Here uh, you can insert new rules and then here you select format only unique or duplicate values and the format all duplicate. So here you check your format, you can change the uh, color of the field. So in this case here, so uh, if there's any duplicate in this uh, column, so it will actually highlight it in the orange color here. So I'm going to do that. And next, I'm going to insert a filter. I'm going to, uh, it will take a while. Okay, should be okay. So I'm going to, let's see if there's any duplicate here at all. I don't think there's any duplicate, so. Just to double check again. Yep, there's no duplicate. If there's duplicate, then I should be able to filter it by uh, color. So, which is good. So, now this data set is now ready. So, I'm going to save this. Okay. And then the next thing is I'm going to format it into the uh, Omics Explorer form format, which they can recognize. So, I'm going to put it like this. And this will be the gene. This will be the... Okay. And now I'm going to save this as a CSV. Okay. Here's a CSV file. I'm going to import it into the uh, Omics Explorer here. Basically, this is mRNA. I'm going to use a wizard. We should be quite familiar with this now. So, okay, here you go. Here are the all the data basically. Now, um. So you can look at from the PCA plus. So at this point, basically the raw data, you can see that while well, there's very little differentiation between the responder and the non-responder. Now, so the next step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, include some statistical analysis to basically filter out the noise. The first thing I would do is basically, um, let me set this to response. So I'm going to filter it by variance so that any noise um, and the outliers can also be removed as well. Now note that because most of this expression data is actually coming from the transcriptomic or uh, NGS analysis, you get a lot of some of the sample, you get a zero rate there. So that's why you definitely need to remove those variables. So to do that, I'm going to slide this bar here okay to to the level that where you get the maximum of this uh, uh, variance uh, or the sigma value once it's reached the maximum then you can stop there so i'm going to slide this slowly so you will see that the variance will probably increase so okay 0 0.33 0 0.34 35 okay 36 Okay, so I think 3.6, that is the first highest that I will achieve, so I will go to stop there. 
if I filter it some more well I'm just afraid that it might be over filtered so if it's over filtered then I will left with very little genes uh, or variables to work with so at this point here basically you still have about uh, 7,000 over variables that you can actually work on okay I think this is good so now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to build the classifier so I'm going to use KNN here I'm going to use the uh, two group comparison and then response I'm going to set it to non responder and I'm going to use the same data as the uh, validation set as well okay now note that with KNN there are a few parameters that you need to consider for example by default the KNN the K value is set at 3 um, but most of the time how do we determine the K the K is basically represent how many uh, node is actually in the neighbors so it depends on the sample size in this case here we actually have 29 non responder and 24 responder so the total sample size is equals to um, let's say is equals to 20 29 so it's equals to 29 plus 24 right so so that will give you total is about 53 samples so to determine the good uh, value, k value to start with normally we do a square root of the total uh, of the total sample size is basically equals to this square root here. so you get about 7.28 so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set the k to say uh, 7 here now you also note that there's a builder here so the good thing about the OMS Explorer is that well it also includes the cross validation steps here to give you the accuracy so by default the cross validation is set at five folds for the inner set and also five fold for the outer sets you can read about uh, this uh, regarding the k folds uh, cross validation basically there are tr at least three types of cross validation one is a common one that we know of be uh, randomly select half of the uh, samples to be a training set another half to be the testing set that's a commonly used another way to do the cross validation is basically what we call the careful cross validation so and finally the most stringent and the most rigorous are basically leaving out uh, cross validation so if you want to do the leave one out cross validation basically you can either do it manually or you can actually change the parameters here down to the very little I mean in theory if you want to do the leave one out then all this should be one but unfortunately in the omics explorer you can only go down to two so but that is quite good enough anyway so we won't be bothered too much about the cross validation I think start with five folds or even ten fold is a good starting point so I would just going to keep it as used uh, the default here so now okay so now everything is ready so I'm just going to click the button the build uh, model here so I'm going to do that and I'm going to save this as mRNA KNN okay so good it's running that okay so it's quite quick so it comes out here basically you know, the first model building is not too bad so the accuracy is about 0 0.89 which is quite good basically and these are the uh, classifiers that is being uh, identify here so we can export this report to uh, mRNA KNN for future reference now so okay that is that is good basically now now we can continue to use uh, SVM so you can do the same as well to build this and then I'm going to save this mRNA SVM okay so this one is also quite good 0 0.87 basically again a few classifiers was being identified here I'm going to save this um, mRNA SVM and finally the last one I'm going to build would be the random tree
Okay, well, the random tree gives you quite a number of classifier here. Let's look at the accuracy. How does it perform? Well, it's actually quite good. <laughs> its accuracy is about one, so that is that's great. So, okay, I'm going to export this out and then um, okay, I think that is basically pretty much done with the model building. So, if you want to check, uh, well, how does it looks like? You can actually go to the variables here. Now you have. You, while well, you have all this classifier that's being identified by different algorithm, you can look at it from the heat map. Okay, you can actually evaluate them well the quality of the separation, whether they are good or not. So, for example, with KNN, so now in the PCA plot, you can see that it's separated quite well. You see that well, most of the blue, blue is basically the non responder, and the yellow is a responder. So, they actually separated quite well it's two different plane there if you want to look at it from the uh, what you call it a uh, heat map point of view you can actually view them with uh, let's see by hierarchical clustering and then the sample order would be by uh, response so you can see some kind of a clear line here a bit of a line here, meaning that while well, this group of genes that they are overexpressed, uh, they tend to be. Let me just put in the color. Should be by respond. Okay. Mm. Respond. So okay. So if this group of genes that are overexpressed, they tend to be more of a responder. Whereas okay, if these genes are upregulated, then they tend to be the non-responder. You can roughly see the cut off line somewhere between here basically not so obvious but then you can actually see see that that's with KNN or if you want to check with let's say SVM so you can also see that as well so the cut off is probably somewhere here uh, not that clear but then if you look at the PCA so again while well, they think to somewhat some degree separate quite nicely and then with random tree so and you can look at the heat map here now you can see that there will be some up regulation and also down regulation here so that is quite good to start with uh, uh, with this model basically